we've got a stuck brake. Recently, I've gone for a stage of abandoned flights. Firstly, I got a puncher in the nose wheel, but only realising it and calling off the flight as I'd lined up all ready to go. No, I'm going to correct. Uh, go, go for Papa Yankee, I'm going to just go back to the uh, apron and see if I have a problem with the brakes. Flat tyre. Then, on the very next flight, I headed out to the runway convinced that I could get a flight in my VFR only aircraft, even though the weather was atrocious only to end up calling it off seconds before I was about to get airborne. Hello for radio, got uh, Charlie Zulu, I'm going to call it off, it uh, looks a bit tight VFR, uh, so uh, I'm going to head back. Go Charlie Zulu, roger, why sure thing? I actually started to think I was jinxed, so when the opportunity came to fly with my co-owner, Jared, just a week later, I jumped at the chance, thinking at least with someone else on board, my run of bad luck and choices, could finally be banished to the past. We met over the airfield nice and early with this plan to fly to a few airfields, building in a nice little lunch on the way, then getting back early afternoon. You join us with Jared in the P1 seat and me as a passenger for the first leg, as we sit at the end of the runway waiting for the engine to warm, before doing our run up checks. We notice a large flock of birds are sitting on the tarmac a few hundred metres from us. With the run-up complete and everything looking good, we call the tower for departure. Golf Charlie Zulu, ORP ready for departure. Golf Charlie Zulu, Roger, surface wind 030 zero degrees, 10 zero knots. Sure. Those birds are still there and they're starting to bother me, as I've had some close calls with birds a fair bit lately. Yeah, what I sometimes do is I just sort of like go slow down to this, I can stop and then they move out of the way, yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is like hammering it there, and then uh, they get, and then they get scared, and they like fly into you. It's not even at the start of the runway. Three zero five going over to South End one three zero decimal seven eight. Bye bye. zero five for our test speed. Same bye bye. They're bold, aren't they? Okay, here we go. Jared selects full power as we accelerate down okay. the runway. As the speed's up and the RPM is up. He's good. Oh, that air's cold. And lift off into the clear blue skies and cold morning air. All feels good as he puts the flaps away at around 200 feet. Flaps up. The engines are all of a sudden started to run rough and we've lost a lot of power. Whoa, whoa. Okay, bring it down. No, we haven't got time. I'm gonna keep the pressure up. We're okay. Golf Charlie Zulu, uh, gonna turn around and uh, land again. Watch that tail. Roger, do you need a consistent? Can you take radio? Yep. Uh, Golf Charlie Zulu, we're gonna land probably on the short runway. We're gonna try and get round. Roger. Okay, brakes. Okay, bring it down. Let's go down on the short well. Oh. Okay, keep it, it going. I'm gonna get it around to the Yep the way. You okay? Yeah. Right, get that speed back. Got loads of runway. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice easy landing now. That's it. Well done. I didn't really make a good decision there on a quick way to go. I felt like it was going to go, but then I thought, what if it just pops though as well? <sighs> Christ. Okay, so what happened there? Let's go through this again and try and run through our thought processes when dealing with a rough running engine at the worst possible time, immediately after takeoff. The run-up checks had shown no issues with the engine at all, 
and the only concern we had was to do with those birds on the runway. As the birds cleared, we settled back to a regular takeoff, and the aircraft actually seemed to accelerate better than normal, considering we were at maximum weight. I put that down to that cold morning air. Jared calls out the engine check before committing to flight, and all is good, and the engine sounds really sweet. Okay, as the speed's up and the RPM is up, he's good. Oh, that air's cold. As we reach flap limiting speed, Jared selects flaps up. Flaps up. Around four seconds later, at 200 feet above the runway, with around 800 meters or 2,600 feet of runway left, the engine starts to run rough and the power decreases. With the loss in power and Jared's natural instincts, the nose drops. I felt like we had enough runway left to put it back down, but as I call it, the engine picks up again and Jared clambers for more height. Jared then calls a return on the radio. As pilot in command, it's his choice as to where to put it down, and I assume he will go for the disused cross runway at Northfield. It is very wide and long, but is not a designated runway, and there are obstacles on it, including a fuel bowser. I then remember that I'm not flying the aircraft, and as we appear to be holding altitude, decide to shut up and let Jared just fly. It's been a bit of a shock, and I check that Jared is feeling all right. You okay? Yeah. All right, get that speed back. We've ended up with more than a 90 degree turn to line up with the runway for landing, but the agile little sport cruiser and Jared's skill managed to bring it around safely, keeping that nose well below the horizon all the way around. As we've made it around safely and can now glide to the landing if needed, a sense of relief fills the cabin. I can feel Jared has been shaken up and I encourage him all the way down to the ground. Okay, we're down. That's it. The engine is purring once again as we taxi to the end of the runway, closely followed by the fire truck. Once back on the apron, we decide to do a full power run up, and it's not long before the rough running manifests itself once more. There, yeah. Definitely missing or something, isn't it? Yeah, feel it. There, oh yeah, there it there. goes. Yeah. There it goes. Hang on, just have a look at everything while it's a. Yeah, just low revs. Yeah, it's really? missing or something like that. It's plug broken down or something like that. Okay, at least we know we can't fly it. <laughs> Christ, okay. We'll have a look underneath while we're here anyway. This aircraft is not flying again until it's been looked at. And as Jared has now left for home, I'm thinking, that's it for my flying today. Or is it? So that was bad news. Partial engine failure. Charlie Zulu's out of commission. But we have. Goopy. I'll explain what the engineers found wrong with the engine in Charlie Zulu later in this video. But for now, Goopy has saved the day as I taxi out for Old Walden, my abandoned flight from when I got that flat tyre a couple of weeks ago. Northwood Radio, good uh, morning, Golf Oscar, 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 Papa Yankee. Golf Oscar, Oscar, Papa Yankee, Northwood, good morning, passing message. Golf Oscar, Oscar, Puffy Yankee, Sport Cruiser, Hangar 6, one on board for Old Warden Airfield information, please. Golf Puffy Yankee, Roger, the active runway 02 with a left hand circuit, QNH 1028. 1028 and 02 left hand, Golf Puffy Yankee. Our routing will take us west after takeoff through the TMZ or Transponder Mandatory Zone, where we'll stay at 1200 feet to the VRP or Visual Reporting Point at where where we would turn northwesterly and climb to 2,000 feet before turning west again to Old Walden, a really short flight of just 35 nautical miles and around 20 minutes. So, 
full power and I start to accelerate down Northfields Runway 02 for the second time this morning. Goopy builds up speed quickly with just me on board and it's not long before we get airborne at almost exactly the same point where Jared and I had lifted off from in Charlie Zulu's fated flight just an hour or so earlier. We climb quickly, building up speed as we do. The flaps overspeed warning reminds me that it's time to put them away. Flaps overspeed. It's great to be finally on my way as Goopy continues to climb out as we leave the runway behind us. Clear to the right, clear to the left. So there you go. So this morning, not a good day. I've been trying so hard to fly recently and uh, it's been one issue after another, even with two aeroplanes. So initial problem was uh, was flying uh, Vince's aircraft, this one, Goopy, and taxied out. Everything was absolutely fine. Want to line up, feel like there's a problem somewhere, couldn't put my finger on it. Ended up pulling over uh, off the runway, just didn't feel happy with it. Checked the aircraft, got a puncher. In the nose wheel, not good. So that was that, so that was first first attempt. Second attempt, weather looked pretty good all round, wasn't too bad, um, not the best of weather, forecast was for it to be clearing up a little bit. Just got Charlie Zulu back from having its parachute dump and uh, weather just closed in and it was just like there's no way I could have flown uh, VFR. A good job I didn't either because uh, if I'd have taken off into it, I may have been able to get up to a few hundred feet uh, and then I would have been in cloud one, super dangerous. Two, we've got no instruments or anything uh, at our airfield. It's a VFR only airfield and uh, it would have been really dodgy. So glad I didn't take off, went back, mission failed. So this morning, been really looking forward to this. Me and Jared were going to go flying together. We again only had the morning. Everything checked out all right. The aircraft's been flown the day before, no problems whatsoever. Approaching waypoint. Take off. So Jared was flying, get into the air, uh, and uh, engine, partial engine failure immediately after takeoff. Jared did a really good job getting it back down. Um, luckily, there was some power there, so it wasn't wasn't total failure. But you never know with these engines; they tend to either just go. Uh, if they're going to go, they'll just sort of like go completely, uh, and we never knew at what point it might let go. So. Yeah, not a good situation that. No, that was this morning. Vince is not flying today, so he kindly let me borrow Goopy. But at least I've got up in the air and uh, now I'm on my way to Old Walden. Something that I tried to do last week when I got the puncher. Old Walden sits at 127 feet above mean sea level and has one usable grass runway, orientated 0220 at 799 metres or 2,620 feet long. It has a NOTAM activated ATZ or air traffic zone which is not in operation today. There's plenty to do here, it has some beautiful gardens, some woodland walks, a stately home and a large museum housing the world famous Shuttleworth collection of over 50 early, mostly airworthy vintage aircraft and a host of vintage vehicles. They also have a great little calf. There's no radio service today at Old Walden, but as I enter the overhead, there's one aircraft, a chipmunk, doing circuits. So I fly over the airfield for the overhead join to runway 02. But as I prepare to descend, another aircraft that has not called up on the radio flies straight across my nose around a third of a mile in front of me. So there's a guy that's not called on the radio, he's obviously in the overhead with me, luckily I kept a bit higher, otherwise I'd have been conflicting with him, and now I've moved right out of the way, there's no point in me even attempting it, he's not calling on the radio, and I can't see him now, so I will join Crosswind now, but I'll come out quite a way, so he's got time to do whatever he's going to do, staying within the ATZ. I estimate him to be at around 2,000 feet and I'm a couple of hundred feet above him. I'm not sure what he's doing, so I end up not descending 
and heading well away from the airfield to give him space. The other aircraft has now turned around and bugged out, never once making a call, so I commence my descent into the pattern on a crosswind leg. My head is swivelling around trying to see where everyone is, and as I prepare to turn downwind, I'm watching to my left to make sure no one else has decided to join on a long downwind and not called. Old Borden traffic stop. Uh, Bubby Yankee Sport Cruiser descending dead side, uh, join crosswind for 02. Old Borden. Where's he? Old Borden traffic, uh, got Bubby Yankee right hand downwind, runway 02, late downwind. Hold on traffic, Golf Alam Delta is uh, late downwind for 02, traffic not sighted or extend. No, OK, all right, I'm at 1600 feet and uh, I'll keep out of the way, I'll come back around and uh, join behind you. Roger, Golf Alam Delta turning right face 02. Just copy, Golf uh, Puppy Yankee. I've kept my circuit higher than the published height to ensure I don't conflict with the aircraft doing circuits. But as I approach the end of the downwind leg, I call my position and hear the chipmunk report in the same area, but about to turn base. I can't see him, so I decide to extend my downward leg to give him room. At last, on a long final for zero 02, always a beautiful approach, with the stately home in the distance, and just that lake to fly over, we finally made it after a very eventful morning. Old Warden traffic golf, Puppy Yankee Sport Cruiser, final zero 02, Old Warden. Short final for zero 02 and the runway's clear and looking good for our landing. Over the fence as we aim to touch down around a third of the way into this more than ample glorious grass runway. It's now time to relax with some lovely coffee and cake. Okay, let's go back to Charlie Zulu and that engine problem. We got the engineers down the very next day and after a thorough check, it turns out to be a spark plug failure. So a new set of plugs later and we're back in the game. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, why not check out this one next? Fly safe and short field out.